Hi guys, I am super excited for today's video. So I talked with my friend Joy Blodgett from Long Depot again, and we had a conversation about the mortgage industry and what's going on right now. She has some great information about some different loan programs, low interest rates, and what it takes to apply for a loan right now. Also, she gave us an update on mortgage forbearance and the new rules that came out by Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac. So stay tuned. If we haven't met yet, welcome to my channel. I'm Laura Randall with Windermere Real Estate, CIR, serving North Snohomish, Skagit, and Island Counties. I share real estate tips on buying, selling, and all things home. So if you wanna keep up with the latest that's going on in our area, go ahead, hit that subscribe button, and click the bell to get notifications so you don't miss out on a thing. Now, let's get hey, Joy, started. Thanks so much for joining us again. I am so excited to just hear from you and get an update on what's going on in the mortgage industry and the mortgage market here in our area. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it. I thought before we got started on mortgage refinancing and mortgage rates for today, I wanted to ask you to give us a quick update on forbearances. Yeah, absolutely. Um, there's definitely been a lot of changes with forbearances and what's going on. Um, some of the just recent updates were Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, who are in charge of like the conventional type loans. They just released um, new information now saying you don't have to wait 12 months before you can purchase or refinance. If you um, did get into a forbearance, there's new restrictions and regulations saying that as long as you're current on your mortgage payment, you don't have to wait if you've missed payments. And also, if you're not current, there is ways we can help you to get current on your um, your mortgage. So there's a lot of different new updates and actual guidelines that have come out. And FHA, VA, and like USDA, they put out different restrictions before, um, just saying that they're going to allow uh, for you to be able to either purchase or refinance your house um, within a certain time frame also. So the biggest thing right now is if you did choose to do a forbearance for a month or two, don't think that there isn't any options for you anymore. There is options and there's more guidelines and rules right now, kind of letting lenders know how to proceed and help people. And you're not going to have to wait 12 months like they were saying before. So it's, it's really good that we now have a direction to be able to help clients that were and who decided to do a forbearance. That's such great news for everybody who had to have a forbearance. So thank you for that update. And now I'm just wondering, is it a good time to refinance? I know the interest rates are really low, but have any of the qualifications or credit scores, has that changed? Yeah, so right now is um, a good time to refinance or even purchase a house um, because interest rates are low. So they have been remaining low. A lot of people don't realize that interest rates are not set in like a specific amount for like a certain day. Interest rates are all dependent on the bond markets and how the stock markets and the bond markets and 10 year treasury and everything is working. So there's a lot of factors that go into interest rates. They do change daily, but they are low right now. They are very low compared to what they have been in the past. So now's a great time to look at refinancing. And a lot of clients that might have had like an FHA loan before where they had mortgage insurance or did a conventional loan where they had mortgage insurance, now's a great time to look at trying to refinance to get rid of mortgage insurance because equity and in properties have gone up. So you can go ahead and look at trying to get rid of that or even reduce it. I've had a few clients refinance, lower their interest rate. And then they've also had the opportunity to lower how much they're paying in monthly mortgage insurance. They don't have enough quite yet to not have mortgage insurance, but they've been able to reduce it down so they can save, you know, possibly a couple hundred dollars by getting rid of that mortgage insurance or dropping it down. So it's always a great time right now to refinance and at least evaluate your mortgage to make sure that it is, you know, you could save. Next, I wanted to ask, what about those who are looking at buying a home now and need a mortgage. Is it taking longer to get mortgages and is it harder to get a mortgage now than it was pre-COVID-19? So it's not taking much longer right now on a purchase to get a house. So great question on that. Now's all great time to look at purchasing the homes. The market's hot. Like 
I am hearing how amazing it is. I have clients purchasing or getting qualified to purchase and there's multiple offers out there. So it's best yeah. to get pre-approved right away because there is multiple offers happening at any price range. A lot of people thought it was just the lower price range, but it's actually in a bunch of different price ranges. So the best thing you can do is look at getting pre-approved um, to get qualified for a purchase. Some of the rules have changed, but not really. Um, the only thing that we've really got instructor on is credit score. Um, that's a big factor right now. And um, just making sure that your score is above a 620 at least, because um, that's what most programs are going to do and require. If you are looking for like a zero down type option and you don't have money to put down on a house, those requirements have gotten stricter. They're requiring more like a 660 credit score and want to make sure that you have reserves available. So you're going to, what reserves are is just showing extra money in the bank. But right now I have a lot of clients that are getting qualified, being able to do like a 3% down type conventional type loan or maybe a 5% down conventional loan. And they're able to purchase a little bit higher or a larger property because interest rates are so low. You mentioned government loans. And so I had a question about USDA loans because I know Kamena Island, parts of Skagit and Snohomish counties qualify for that USDA loans. Is it tougher to qualify for those? Yeah, so USDA is a really great loan for those who are looking to purchase in what are considered rural areas. So Stanwood, Arlington, Camino Island, um, parts of Mount Vernon, uh, and parts of even um, out towards Lake Stevens area, Monroe, that's still considered, some of it is considered rural. And those programs are a zero down program. The interest rates are pretty low. Um, so I've seen them drop down almost to 3%, like a little bit lower than 3%. Sometimes it's all based on your credit score. And those programs, the biggest things with those program or the USDA program is it is income driven. So you can't make more than a certain amount for that county, and every county has a different income limit. So if you're a family of um, under four for Snohomish County, you can't make more than 140000 So a lot of people can still qualify for that program. The restrictions, though, are it is a little bit more credit-driven. It wants to see you have good credit and also your debt-to-income, so how much you gross income compared to all your debts and what your current mortgage payment is. Um, needs to be pretty low, like under 40%. So it's a great program. Just getting qualified can be a little bit tougher than what another government program is, and that's an FHA program. Great. So people interested in USDA, because it is such a great program and great opportunity, mostly they should call their lender and find out what those income limits are in the area that they're yeah. looking yeah, absolutely. So yeah, so the first thing you want to do is just make sure that you can qualify for the program by reaching out to a lender and just let them know that you are looking to do a zero down type program and that you want to see if you can qualify. So it's always good to first get qualified under that program. If for some reason you can't, then you can switch to a different zero down program, which is through the Washington State Housing Finance Commission. And that's another great program. The interest rates are a little bit higher on that program and the mortgage insurance is higher, but it's a great alternative to the USDA program, the zero down options. Okay, great. And then I wanted to go to a different extreme here and ask you about jumbo loans. So I know that during these last months, they've been really difficult to to come by if you can at all. And so are those coming back at all or are there other alternatives? Yeah, that's a great question. So completely opposite of zero down loan, you have the jumbo loans and they are slowly opening jumbos back up, but it's also case by case. Some lenders are allowing it and some are not. So it just kind of depends upon who you're gonna use. I know for my company at Loan Depot, we are starting to allow a few jumbo products to come back but we are getting pretty strict on making sure that, you know, once you put your money down, that you also have reserves available to help cover that mortgage payment. So yes, they are starting to come back. More and more lenders are starting to release more programs and change some of the guidelines and restrictions on a lot of programs. Um, and as we continue to open up and as people continue to go back to work, uh, you're gonna start seeing some of those programs open up even more. I don't think we're going to go back to pre-COVID-19 where the restrictions are going to be a lot less and, le and credit scores are going to be lower, but we are going to start seeing some um, le relief on certain programs. Thank you so much. It's always so great to have you and share your knowledge.
Um, so if somebody is looking to purchase or refinance, how would they get a hold of you? Uh, so thank you for having me first. And absolutely. Um, so the best way to get a hold of me is honestly just to reach out to me and you can call me on my cell phone at 425-879-5771. Um, picking up the phone is the best way. It's easy. If not, um, I'm available by email, which I do have a lot of clients, new clients reach out by email. I prefer to talk to somebody um, on the phone since we're not allowed to meet face to face right now with everything going on still. But so honestly, if somebody could just reach out, give me a call, I'll give you a call back um, and just reach out and really let me know because talking and being able to have that conversation is probably the best way to look at getting pre-approved. Perfect. And thank you so much again, Joy. And I would love it if you guys would put in the comments below if there's a topic about loans you want to hear about or questions that you have, and we would be happy to come back and answer those. Yeah, absolutely. So if you hear of anything or anybody has any generic questions or maybe just even kind of a strange situation that they're going through, I'm happy to help answer any questions and maybe just give a little bit of advice on what to do. Oh my goodness, you guys, that was great. So I would love it if you would comment below and let me know if you have any questions about some of the things that Joy talked about today or any questions about real estate in general. We would love to cover that in a future video. And as always, please subscribe to my channel and hit that bell for notifications so you know when new videos are coming out. I look forward to connecting with you.